Hi guys, it's me Azan. Welcome back to another video. Today we are going, well tonight, because <laughs> it is really late. Um, we are going to be talking about the Book of Shadows, the Grimoire, or in more general terms, the Witch's Bible. Now, if you guys would like to learn more about said topics, by all means, be sure to continue on watching. Now, before we begin, I would like to start by asking if you guys like my setup i mean it's not the best but i mean i like it it's not done but i mean like yeah because like i want to put there like something i don't know what i'm trying to look for something to put here but i just can't find anything i want like something triangle there because you know like aesthetic but whatever anyways hi um yes grimoires and like book of shadows what is it how do i start one what is the information that i should put in my own book of shadows and so on by all means i'm gonna answer that right now so if you guys didn't know wicca is a modern day religion that was founded in the 1950s by gerald b gardner and even though it is modern it is a religion that is rooted in ancient pagan beliefs that were pretty much passed down orally from person to person now that being said i believe that this is one of the probably many reasons why us wiccans and again more in general terms us the witches don't really have a bible like for example like the christians do their own bible and how the muslims do the quran i think it's called that being said um we technically do have a book that we consider sacred so we do have our own bible but it is something that is um sacred to us individually so my own book is my own bible it is my own sacred book because um you know um it is something that i made and the information there is important to me and so on now your book i may view it as you know your own book of shadows therefore you know your own sacred book but its sanctity may not be the same or for the most part will not be the same as the sanctity that i have with my own book however it does not stop being a sacred book just because your book is not equally sacred to me i do have my respect towards it but it's not um the same anyways the point being the sacred book that we create ourselves um may have any name that we want though typically if we're going a little bit more traditional when it comes to the naming of the book um people use the name the book of shadows which is a term that is believed to be introduced by Gerald Gardner, the founder himself, and I believe was then later popularized by the 80, by the 98 series Charmed. Now, another traditional name that you may choose to use to uh, with your own book is the name Grimoire. You may also choose to call your book the Book of Knowledge, the Biblia Sacra, which is a term that I just freaking love. You may choose to also use um, the Book of Knowledge and so on. The Book of Knowledge is actually what I call my own book, but I am contemplating about how I feel um, when it comes to the term Biblia Sacra because I like it, but I don't know if it's something that I feel as close to right now. Now, that all being said, we're going to be talking about the two traditional books, which are the Book of Shadows and the Grimoire. Now, what exactly is a Book of Shadows? Now, a Book of Shadows, in a nutshell of a nutshell, it is essentially, as the, as the term states, it is a book. It can be a journal, it can be a bound book, it can be um, a big book, it can be a small book, it can be a binder, anything. It can be a digital book, it can be anything that is something that you can write down information. Um, the important thing of this book in particular, the Book of Shadows, is that it is supposed to reflect your beliefs, your practices, your experiences, your thoughts, the most important of all, it is supposed to reflect you as a practitioner, as a witch, as a Wiccan, or whatever it is that you are practicing. Now, when it comes to the word shadows, um, a lot of people hear like the book of shadows and they associate that word 
in the term with demons you know the shadow something you know black magic and stuff like that because shadow the word shadows has like this negative connotation such as for example the one that i used to um have when it came to shadow work i literally believed that like back in the day that um the witches used to literally work with like the shadows and like you know do bad like you know it was ignorance at the end of the day um you know i was young i was learning and that's okay you know we learn we grow the point being that um when it comes to the word shadows in that term i believe that one of the many well two of the many many reasons why we use that word is because that back in the day you know the or even till this day the knowledge that we put in that book is knowledge that was practiced in secret therefore in the shadows um, that could have most likely than not gotten us punished, imprisoned, or actually even killed. Additionally, the book, considering that it is a reflection of its owner, um, it contains information that is typically not spoken of their own. Therefore, it is, you know, hidden, therefore, in the shadows. Now, when it comes to the grimoire, it is similar to the Book of Shadows, However, the contents of said book is going to be a little bit more strict. So instead of it being a reflection of you, it is just going to be a book, the grimoire, that is going to um, have information that is very instructional. So there is there that is the book that you are pretty much going to have your spells, your rituals, and like let's say you know um certain knowledge like for example during the full moon this happens um the full moons you can do this and that and that and this during the waning moon that and that and this and that you know you're just gonna have a bunch of information that is useful to you. It is not as personal as the Book of Shadows if we are talking in a, uh, in a pure standpoint of view. However, the Book of Shadows and the Grimoire are terms that people tend to use extremely interchangeably, so it doesn't really matter whether or not you have the uh, you use the other one or you know not. Um, because at the end of the day, um, it is your book, you can call it whatever you want, and if to you grimoire is a term that speaks to you, then by all means. When it comes to the differences between the Book of Shadows and Grimoire, if we're talking a little bit more, again, in the, on the purest stand, in a purest standpoint of view, then the Book of Shadows is considered to be more personal and less limiting because it is a book where you can add pictures, you can add doodles, drawings, you can add pretty much anything that speaks to you. You can also add your thoughts and as, as I said, anything you feel connected to. Whether it may be colors, whether it may be um, multimedia, um, whether it may be a picture, like I said before, of your family, whether it may be, you know, you talking about your family tree and so on. I would also like to add that Typically, I've noticed that the Book of Shadows is the book that is passed down through your generation. An example, I would pass down my Book of Shadows to my children. My children would pass our Book of Shadows to their children and so on and so forth. And although the grimoire is something that can be done the same, as I stated, it is less personal. So at the same time, you can also pass down your grimoire. And you know, and considering the differences, the Book of Shadows, as I said, it is more strict with its contents and it is less personal. So the things that you would normally add to your Book of Shadows that would make it yours, like what would make the book literally have your essence would not be normally added into the grim work. Such as, for example, you may not, you may not want to add your name you may not want to add your birth your birth chart if it is something that you also want to add and so on um now when it comes to the contents of the book of shadows um you can pretty much add anything that relates to your spiritual path pardon if you are a wiccan um you may choose to add an invocation to a or the god and the goddess you can also choose to add the wiccan read whether it may be the short version or the long version the short version being the short version being the actual wiccan read which states um eight words the wiccan read fulfill and in turn none do what you will you may also choose to add, as I said, the longer version, which is the one that is most commonly used in the Wiccan, I guess, community. 
you can also choose to add an alter diagram. An alter diagram is basically a picture or a doodle or basically something that lets you know, that lets you and allows you to see the proper way that you would like your altar to always be set up or the way that you want your altar to be set up during certain, you know, uh, rituals, events, and so on. This is for when, let's say, that you move and you want to transfer, you know, your altar, then you probably will not remember how your altar is currently or was at the time set up so you're gonna look in the diagram and then you're gonna be able to see how it was and then you can do it once again you may also choose to add in your book of shadows casting and closing a circle you may choose to add spells and rituals prayers chants songs any dream interpretations you can also add the divination readings that you have had any divination spread or whatever it may be you may also add information about the history of Wicca or the history of witchcraft, should I say, um, to be more general. And you can also add um, the elements, who they are, what they do, um, how to work with them. You can also add the types of magic, such as not magic, folk magic, what they are, who are the people that practices this, practices it, how to practice it and so on. You may also choose to include black or white magic. Now emphasis on this. Now the reason being that um, black magic and white magic are terms that are associated with racism because of the, I guess, the history of discrimination based on those terms. So I'm gonna give a personal example. When I was younger, I, you know, I obviously grew up, you know, loving witches and so on and watching horror movies. Um, among the horror movies that I've seen, um, I remember seeing movies where, you know, um, black magic was something that was mainly, if not most commonly practiced by black people. You know, them with the memorable, um, at the time, uh, you know outfits and like they had the doll the voodoo doll and like causing pain and like you know killing like literal actual like physical sacrifices and stuff like that lots of blood um but when it came to white magic i remember um you know seeing a lot of you know white people you know white uh outfits you know a lot of blessings healings and stuff like that you know obviously i grew i'm no longer ignorant to that but um a lot of people do not like it because it is what most people associate you know said terms with so it's all up to like i guess debate currently i'm at this point in my life where i don't I, i'm not only am i conflicted but like i'm also not really as bothered as i was before because you know i understand that it is not the way like that i understand that that is not what it is um you know black magic by only black people white by you know white people like i understand that that is not the way that it is i'm no longer ignorant to that because i learned from my mistake however i do feel a sense of relief and you know i it, it you know for uh, the sake of my sanity i suppose <laughs> I use malevolent, I use baneful or obscure magic, and for white magic, I use uh, benevolent and good magic. Now, mind you, magic is neither good or bad because magic, like I like to say, it is like a knife. You can either use it to do good, to cook, cut things, or you can use it to do bad, which is to kill people or things. Now, in your Book of Shadows, you may also choose to add Moon Water, which I have a video about that you can watch up there. I suggest that you watch it. I go into detail about um, how to make it, what it is, what you can use it for, and so on. But essentially, Moon Water is just water that has been blessed with the energies of the moon. You can also include sigils. Again, I have a video about that that you can click right there to watch after watching this one. And I pretty much cover the same um, information that I covered in my moon um, water video. How to use it, how to create it, what it is, and so on. But essentially, a sigil is a, magic, a magical symbolic representation of an intent. Now, the reason why I use the word magical is because personally, I use sigils for magic. Now, if you were to use sigils for other things other than, then you would just take out the word magical and therefore it would just be a symbolic representation of an intent. You may also choose to add in your Book of Shadows, like I said before, art. You may also choose to add 
herbs, literal dried herbs or information about herbs that you may choose to add or work with. You may choose to add deity information, whether it may be deities that you um, are currently working with. Uh, and you may also do that in order to honor them. And by doing that, you are also adding more of the sanctity into your own book. You may also choose to add uh, information about different sets of deities from different pantheons. You may choose to also add information on the Wheel of the Year, the Sabbaths and Esbats. Now, if you are not a Wiccan, that is completely fine. You can add or take out things that in your path are completely irrelevant. So if you are a witch, but you do not believe in a god and a goddess, then by all means, take that out. And also, you may also choose to um, add a dedication page. You may also choose to add a book blessing page. You may also choose to add a sigil for protection, which some people choose to um, add them in the first page because it add, it acts like a shield. Think of it like an actual shield in the sense that when you use a shield, the shield is protecting what's behind it. So that sigil is going to literally be a protection barrier from whatever it is that you're trying to protect it from, whether it be prying eyes, um, unwanted, I guess, seers, um, or energies, and so on. You may also choose to add a petition, a type of prayer or something, literally like in the cover, and then you may choose to cover <laughs> the cover in which where the petition is written on. Um, and yeah, the, these are just things that you can do in your own book. Of course, like I said, you can also add way more or very little. It really depends on you because it is your book and it is your sacred book. That is what's most important. In terms of a grimoire, um, when it comes to being, uh, I guess, a purist, um, you should add things that are informative and instructional. If you are a Wiccan, you may choose to add the, or a specific, should I say, Wick, uh, invocation to a god and a goddess, or a the god and the goddess. You may also choose to add the history of witchcraft. You can be as, it can be as short and simple or as long and lengthy as you want. You may also choose to add the altar diagram, the same reason as stated before. You can also choose to add the tools of the craft, which basically are the Book of Shadows, you know, because it is a sacred book. Um, it is a tool that you will use in your practice. You can also include wand, the wand. You can choose to include the athame, the censer, candles, uh, statues, the cauldron, the bell, the sword, the pretty much anything like that. And although there is a lot of information that you can include amongst the many tools of the craft, remember that you should, in my opinion, only include things that are relevant and are currently um, useful to you in the moment. Um, you can also include information on the sabbats and esbats. You can also add spells and rituals. Now, in this case, I suggest that you add it in a more general term, such as how to create your own spells and how to create your own rituals. You can also include how to take part in divination, how to do, um, you know, a, a tarot reading, um, uh, specific interpretations on certain cards, and so on. You may choose to add instructional information on how to do specific things, such as, for example, if there is a specific um, initiation ritual that you think is important that you should add in your grimoire, by all means, you can add it. How to open and close a circle how to do specific spell work or rituals such as if you want to have a spell um all written down that has to do with drawing in money by all means how to do a specific love spell how to do you know certain things then by all means you can include that there you may also choose to include information on remedies and potions now when it comes to potions some people believe that not all potions should be consumed so that is also something that you should include in your grimoire um and pretty much that and remember that these 
are just a few that you can add to your book, but they're not exactly like what you need to add. Only add things that you like, think of your things of your interest and so on. Because let's say that you are, um, you know, working on your own Bible. You do not want to add anything on astrology if you're just not interested it's going to seem like a lot of work because it's just something that you're not interested it's like a drag like oh my god i you know you just don't it, it's in my opinion it's going to be losing that sense of sanctity or that um energetic you know level of sanctity because now you're just looking at your book of shadows as something that you just have to work on and you don't want to do it because you just don't like what you're going to be writing but you know what i mean like you don't want to associate your book your bible with that energy only add information that you like only stuff that you are interested in only stuff that you are currently working on and anything that pretty much speaks to you anything that you feel connected to now that being said I'm going to now be giving you a few tips that I highly recommend witches or in general Wiccans um, when it comes to creating your own Bible so highly suggest that you use when you're doing your research multiple sources such as books you want to use online resources you maybe want to use um such as um you know facebook groups you may want to use tumblr if you want to do that um maybe certain websites maybe you want to use youtube videos such as this one and so on I want to emphasize that you need to take your time. Do not rush the process because when you rush it, you'll most likely end up copy pasting the information. And I'm going to touch on that a little bit later. And when you do that, you know, it's just something that, um, in my opinion, you're just not going to be learning. Um, but anyways, when you are researching, you know, um, using multiple sources, you should, in my opinion, once again, um, you know preferably cross-reference so if let's say this book says something and i said something and then you see someone else and a few other people say it then it is common knowledge and by common i mean something that it's commonly practiced so by all means if you want to include that then you should do it um if you find information that isn't you know um shared commonly or information that you just simply cannot find somewhere else then that is your decision if you want to include it or not now my second tip is not to copy and paste that information because of what i said earlier and i highly suggest that when it comes to this to again only add what's useful to you right now work in the present maybe in the future in the sense of like you preparing yourself for something that you're going to do later on but for the most part work with what you are practicing right now um summarize uh, the information that you researched and if you just cannot understand something look somewhere else and do not be afraid to ask remember that we all began somewhere so your question highly 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 believe that was someone else's question you know so what's the fear we were all beginners we were all newly born witches so there's no i don't believe that to anything there is a stupid question there are stupid people who believe those are stupid questions without even thinking that there was a point where you did not know that answer so why you know what i mean so why belittle someone for having that same question anyways i'm not gonna get heated <laughs> and lastly but certainly not the least it is your book it is your sacred book it is your bible so you can call it whatever it is that feels right to you and it can look the way that you want it to look meaning you can customize it to be whatever you want if you want your book to have this um extravagant vintage look and vibe feel by all means that is your book if that's what you want you can do it if you want to have a book that looks you know um very modernized by all means if your book literally looks like this that's okay you know that's completely fine if your book looks like something else same thing applies your book can be made literally out of anything. It can be a bound book. It can be a binder. 
maybe you can choose to decorate it later on that's your opinion you can literally create your own book or you can use um uh you know uh your computer or overall just you know have your book of shadows or your bible be digital we live in a modern society and we have technology I understand that not everybody has the, I guess, not luxury, but not everybody has the um, the blessing, I suppose you could call it, to have, you know, their physical book. So let's take advantage of the power and the things that we have right now that was back in the day, not only not accessible, but were literally not existent. So by that, I mean, if you want to have your book of shadows digitally and you want to you know uh have it be so that it is saved in the cloud or google drive by all means you can create another email and then upload your books or the chapters or the information there so that whenever it is that you want to go back to it you can just download it or work with it you know in uh google documents that being said, remember it is your book. You can work with what you have. And you know, it's just about, you know, having fun overall. This is your book. This is um something that you are doing for yourself. You know, this is you keeping record of everything that you are currently practicing. This is where you will literally see in the future your own growth, where you will look back into the book and see, like, wow. Wow, I, I used to believe this. I can't believe how much I've grown. I can't believe, I used to believe that, that there was a possibility of me turning into a, a cat or, or a vampire, a mermaid, a fairy, like an actual Harry Potter witch, a, a, a wizard, you know, whatever. You know, like that used to be me, you know, and I, you know, and I've seen my growth. So can you imagine just you looking at your own growth? That's just something that I believe is, in and of itself is magical. So um, yeah, I think that would be all. I would like to end this by saying that if you guys have any questions, again, do not be afraid to ask. We are all learning. There was a time when we were all beginning at something. So do not be afraid of asking anything. And if you are, that's okay. But eventually, you know, if you don't find the answer, you're just gonna have to give in and ask someone. Um, and remember, not everybody is an ex expert on everything, but I mean, it, it always is helpful to, you know, ask around. So by all means, um, trust me, I, I know the answer and I can help you. I will do it gladly. Um, if I can, then I mean, I, I guess we will learn, you know, together. Um, but yeah, you know, don't be afraid as well to ask other people in the comment section if there are more people commenting. And yeah, I think that would be all. Just don't be afraid. You do you, learn, grow, and expand your knowledge because that's why we're here. And um, yeah, if you guys liked it, be sure to leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I guess see you guys later.